Total Warfare. So one of the unique things about Battletech is the idea that you can play just mechs. You can incorporate other ground forces like infantry and tanks. You can do air support. You can do artillery support. And all of these rules integrate seamlessly. Likewise, you can pull things out and just play mechs or even just vehicles, just infantry. Admittedly, though, the mechs are the stars of the game, the knights of the future on there. What about artillery? That's what I want to explore and look at in this podcast, in this vlog, as uh, something to consider in your own Battletech evolution, but also to remind us as a mech commander, while the mechs are kings of the battlefield, conventional arms, when used correctly, something as old school as artillery can really bring down some earth-shaking pain on your opponent. So it's a tool. The first thing that I like to do in a game is establish a battle value. And this could be ahead of time, or this could just be sitting down before we start pulling out miniatures and getting ready. What do you and I want to play? 5K, 6K, 8K battle value, clans, maybe a little bit higher. Then do we want to play total warfare? What's included in that? So mechs, tanks, artillery, air support. That doesn't mean that you have to spend battle value for it. But in your mech collection, if you have nothing to deal with air support and you don't have any air support yourself, it, it would be a pretty one-sided game and pretty beardy for me just to load up on all air support and overwhelm you from that perspective. So I, I believe like this, this checklist of like what do we want to spend our battle value on is important. So if we say we're going to include artillery in the battle value, maybe I take it, maybe I don't. We'll find out when the game starts. So what's interesting about artillery in the rules is, for the most part, it's considered off-table. The range is so extreme on it, it's literally like 15 hex maps on there. So realistically, when we play at the, at the store, the artillery model would be in the pizza shop about like across the street on there it's it's crazy with what it represents in terms of range but if we think about the scale of battle tech that makes complete sense now there is some artillery that can operate on the table we look at the long tom or uh, we look at the thumper and other smaller artillery pieces on there that's an option too but that's the kind of the first piece are you going to play off table and is your opponent going to have a way to deal with that or are you going to play on table artillery support on table artillery support well now you get into questions of um, minimum range i wouldn't play it on one hex map if we're playing it on a traditional war gaming table you know kind of um three by six on there then yes i think artillery should be on the table because it should give your opponent a chance to destroy it to counter it it opens up a new tactical advantage although if you're playing off table you could play with the rules that hey when if you're playing with air support and it flies off the map uh, it could make an attack run against artillery on there and maybe you have some defensive units on there you could actually have units and play it out almost from a role-playing perspective uh, as opposed to a miniature perspective so that's kind of the first consideration to think about artillery itself happens in a subphase, meaning you mark down you record where it's going to actually land. You're calling in those coordinates. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the hex maps have those little numbers on them. Another reason is if you want to pause the game, you can write down where stuff is on a hex map. If you were coming back and had some special effects ahead of time, minefields, things like that, uh, there are times when these numbers come into play. You mark where you're calling in that artillery strike. And then at the end of the turn... That's where it happens, because there's this lag time literally as it travels. That's what it, it represents. So what you have is a way to indirectly attack and threaten. So you have it where the artillery does tremendous amounts of damage. You don't want to get hit. But the truth is, if we're just randomly dropping artillery on a table, and it's an open table without um, defined mission goals, like defending a base or moving to a certain area... Are you really worried about it? Is it really that much of a threat? 
So this is now where the tactics come in. Um, you need to use your insert mechs, insert vehicles, insert infantry to push your opponent someplace that you can drop artillery on. Um, an example might be if there's a group of trees or if there's a light forest or if there's a couple of key pieces of terrain that would give your opponent a tremendous advantage. Um, a great example of this is in one of the classic hex maps. There's a group of light. Uh, it's very small. It's only going to fit a couple of mechs. Light and heavy woods next to an on elevation. So that means I could get a longbow or an archer with elevation. It's going to give me line of sight. And I'm going to be able to pelt you and just blast you with that. Um, there's also a nice little spot to set up indirect fire, a level three on one of the maps. Where and I'm not saying game the maps. I'm just giving examples where it's over in the, the far corner. I can park two longbows there. And given the small small footprint of the map just pelt you with with crazy indirect fire and you really have to run around to get me artillery would be great for that you know where i'm gonna go you know what i'm gonna do and even with the deviation and calling in the hit and the movement if it's a static area and you can drop artillery on me that's where things really really change city fight city tech I don't want to say mandatory for artillery, but now this is where it really, really shines, um, especially if you're an attacker or especially if you control half the city or your opponent controls half the city. Being able to drop artillery on buildings and certain areas that might be hiding infantry, that might be hiding tanks, that might be hiding mechs is huge because half a city fight is... Being able to utilize the buildings not only for cover, not only for ambushes, um, but to remain hidden, to remain dug in, to remain unknown, especially with infantry. And uh, there's a lot of dedicated units dedicated to trying to flush out hidden units on there. When in doubt, just start rolling thunder, just start dropping artillery on there. And for the battle value, with the limitations that it has, it's not overly pricey. It, it really isn't that expensive. So what do I have in my collection? What do you guys have in your collection? What miniatures should we be looking at to, um, to represent this? Uh, certainly I have one long tom piece. And I have four thumper pieces on there. These are the kind of proxied also as field guns. Um, I'll utilize them with a stand of infantry, kind of towing on a chassis with my goblins. Works both ways on there pulls double duty. I think that's that piece, that size is um, better to play for artillery because, again, you could play it as straight-up artillery on the map or you could also play it as field guns of various caliber for your infantry. But having that piece on the table, I, I do prefer to play that way, not only for the visuals, but to now open up another aspect for your opponent to counter or not. Another piece in your Battletech arsenal, as a mech commander, certainly not a primary weapon, certainly a lot of finesse, um, certainly a lot of shock and awe in there, and that one time it connects, you're going to be like, wow. Um, but it's more of a area denial, pushing, funneling into a certain area, or very, very specific, like in City Fight, City Tech, than, say, the primary attack of mechs and vehicles.